How is she? Sorted. Rob, I'm sorry. These lectures, they, they don't come up very often. Thanks for covering. Maybe Roger shouldn't have operated on her. Maybe he should have referred her for radiotherapy. Why'd you say that? No reason. I don't worry anymore about how much these things affect me. I worry about how little they do. Come on. I'll buy you a drink. Mm, I've got a good report. Afterwards, then. Afterwards, I go home. Um, this month, I had one instance of post-operative mortality. The patient was 67 years old, with end-stage CA cervix, pulmonary mets, and pneumonia. <clears throat> She was awaiting transfer to a hospice, but unfortunately died on the ward before a place could be found. Um, I carried out palliative excision and repair on her 29 days <clears throat> prior to her death. Uh, radiotherapy was an alternative, but it would have made her extremely ill. The palliative surgery gave her the best chance of a reasonable quality of life, and the MRI scan indicated she was operable. Thank you. Death is a death, though. Well, when it's in black and white. Yeah, but it's easy to have impressive figures when you turn away anyone who's really sick. You know, someone told me something once. I think it was an old boss of mine. <clears throat> the superior surgeon uses his superior judgment to steer clear of any situation which might test his superior ability. Fix this. No, they haven't so far. Thanks for everything. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was that. Mm -hmm. No, it's good chops though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a mustard flavour. I mean, it's mustard this week. The Antichrist wants mustard. Mm -hmm. Oh. oh. Mm. oh. Drugs wrong. What? Drugs wrong. Oh, drugs wrong. I tingle. <laughs> Angela Strawberry. That's an unusual name. Very pretty. Thank you. Oh, sorry. <coughs> I've got a bit of a sore throat. Well, I'm Polly Gray. I'm specialist registrar in obstetrics and gynaecology, and I was wondering if I could ask you some questions about your sex life. I don't see why not. Thank <laughs> you. Are you in a sexual relationship? Honestly, it's it's medical. Have you ever thought to um, have problems with Sarah, we spoke side. about laparoscopy in oh. outpatients. Um, okay. I'm going to make a small incision in the abdomen, take a look inside with a tiny little telescope. All I need is your consent. I've been doing some research on the internet. Oh, Jesus. I'd like to ask again about the risks. <clears throat> Laparoscopy isn't a high-risk operation. Uh, of course, no medical procedure is without its dangers. Thousands of people have operations in the NHS every day. Only a small number of them have any problems. That's the most important thing to remember. You're patronising me. Of course I am. I'm a doctor. <sighs> but I'm also telling you the truth. Worst-case scenario, what can go wrong? Like I say, there's no worst-case scenario commonly associated with this medical procedure. There are always worst-case scenarios. I insist on knowing or I'll withhold consent. You could suffer a reaction to the anaesthetic, which would leave you either dead or permanently disabled. 
You could hemorrhage during the operation and bleed to death. The operation could be a complete success, um, but you get a clot forming in your leg which would shoot up to the lungs and then bang, fatal cardiac arrest. When did your last orgasm result from sexual intercourse or masturbation? Rob Lake, you're bleeding me. Hi, Rob, it's Maya. Look, I know this sounds like rubbish, but I've got a patient here with a really bad sore throat. I was thinking it could be acute epiglottitis. We're ready for you. She needs an ENT opinion. Look, um, I've got to go into a case, but if you've got any problems, give me a call, OK? All right, no problem. Um, OK, Angela, can you keep still for me? I just need to listen to your chest. It's okay. It's all right. Shit. Donna, get me an adrenaline nebenroids and 200 ida cortisone IV. Okay. Did you speak to any ENT? I thought you were going to do it. What? You said she needed an ENT opinion. They'll only see gynae patients if the registrar or above make the referral, so I assumed you were going to call them. That's not what I meant at all. That's what it sounded like. Wait, what do we do? Get the crash trolley. I need the bleep number for the registrar and call for ENT, please. Oh, and G, Mr. Lake. She's busy. Listen, mate, I need this line for an urgent medical call. Oh, and G, Mr. Lake. Thanks for getting back to me, OK? I've got a woman with a uh, possibly acute epiglottitis. Okay. Well, uh, get here as soon as you can, please. ENT Reg is non-residential. He's, he's in theatre at General. He's going to get here as soon as he can. She might last. Can you put out a fast bleep to the senior anaesthetist on call? Thank you. What's her name? Angela. Angela, stop. Angela. The ENT surgeon's going to be here very soon. In the meantime, you've got to let the nebulizer help you breathe. Try and relax for me, OK? <laughs> Achieving. Okay, I need a big Venflon and a three-way tap. Get me an oxygen line on him, please. Venflon, three-way tap. when I'm ready, thank okay, you. Okay. okay, I'm in the truck, yeah. <laughs> Keep still, and. Oxygen's in. The oxygen's going in now, Angela. Angela, the oxygen's going to help you, but you've got to help me by keeping still, please. Keep still. Oh, shit. <sighs> OK, she's going to need a surgical crike. Um, get back onto ENT. Call around, see if anybody's done a crike before. An air call, Mr Hurley. She needs it now, Rob. She's in a fucking section, Donna. I've never even seen a crike. She needs a stable crike.